John and Juliet have decided to retire and um, they asked us if we'd like to buy um, buy the mill and you know we have no common sense so we said yes. <laughs> This is Helena, I am Sonia, and you are watching the John Arvin Textiles vlog. And I think we're on like number nine? We're on number nine. Helena wrote it down, she knows what's going on. <laughs> we haven't done one of these for a while, have we, Hells? Not since November. November. Sorry. Yeah, we've been busy. We've missed you. <laughs> um, it's been a good kind of four or five months since the last one. Yeah. Um, so far too long we just got a bit busy um, and one of the main big things that we got busy with is um, Helena and I are buying the mill so for our sins <laughs> yeah exactly for our sins um, yeah so you'll be seeing lots more of us until the end of time now is it Helena <laughs> or until we get bored <laughs> yeah I think 21 years, that's what John and Juliet did, Very so at least a decade, I reckon. Probably. <laughs> so yeah, and um, that's the kind of biggest, most exciting news that we've had. Um, I think we announced it um, just before going to Wonderwall a couple of weeks ago. We've got lots of fun things planned, but um, not much is going to change that you guys see for a little while. Not only because it takes about two years to plan new yards, so you won't see anything really new for quite some time, um, but also from what sort of things that you do see. We, I've been here for five years, yeah, a bit more than five years, and you've been here for four years. Yeah, so, exactly. so quite a lot of what's already here, all this lovely stuff behind us. Yeah, exactly. uh, we've worked on that already, so yeah, a lot it's all new. Yeah. It won't feel very different. No, I don't think so. It'll just be more of the same, you know. Um, yeah, and it's not like John and Juliet are going away, going away forever. As far as I know, they're not planning on moving to a desert island. <laughs> Hopefully not. John is still our maintenance guy, so he yeah. will still be here playing with his favourite machines. Exactly. Underneath them, ratchet in hand, so he better not be moving to a desert island. But we keep. We, we're good learners, I think. We learn pretty quick. We'll get the hang of it, but um, yeah, I think the main sort of thing that we're looking forward to doing is just more of the same, really. We're both, you know, yeah. yarn nerds. Expanding <laughs> a couple of the yarn ranges, and yeah. doing pretty colours, and yeah. lots of fun little specials, 100%. and looking into all the fibres we have, because we really like finding interesting things and working with what we have here in the West Country. Yeah, exactly. See what we can do. And we also just wanted to say thank you to all of you out there for your support and encouragement. I think we're both quite aware that John and Juliet are sort of fibre legends. So <laughs> I think when we announced it and everyone was just like, no, we were quite chuffed. <laughs> it means a lot. So thank you. Your encouragement is really nice. And um, yeah, we're just, you know, looking forward to sort of being able to share more exciting colours and blends and different bits and bobs with you. Yeah. So some of which we have coming up then. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why we're doing the vlog. After all, is because we, we have made a thing. <laughs> Should we tell you about something new we've made? Yeah, please. I'm all ears. But it's still very special and exciting. You might recognise the colours, but uh, a new weight. So yes. this is Appledore lace. We've made lace, more lace. We needed more lace because we only had the one, Alpaca Supreme, which is beautiful and lovely, but it's not to everyone's taste. No, we it's needed a, a crunchier, a more rugged sort of a lace, not just a really buttery soft one. Yes. So we're thinking like for all of those people that want to make beautiful Shetland style hat shawls and things like that, that this is something that worked beautifully for that. Yeah. Um, or yeah, just a, a lightweight garment and anything yeah. like that. So yeah, instead of going for like a four ply lighter than the DK, we decided we'd go for lace. We did, and it's real beautiful. It's a firm favourite now. Yeah, we 
I love these. These would make a really nice stripy thing, actually. Yes, yes they would. Yeah. So we've got just a few of the different colours. Yeah, and we'll show you all the colours kind of properly and close up yeah. in a little bit. And then we've got some patterns as well, haven't we, Hells? Yeah, this is the lace weight. We sell it in 50 grams gains because obviously you get quite a lot of literature. And then if you are doing something that's not one colour, you can mix and match a bit better. Definitely. It is colors. 275 meters for 50 grams, so that's so, what we get. 550 for 100 grams. Yes. So it's on the thicker end of lace, I'd yes. say, which is nice because if it's too fine, it always hurts my hands. Yeah, you don't have to use the tiniest lace needles if you don't want to. I use a, um, like a 3 mil 325 for this, so it's like not too skinny. Um, yeah, but it's really lovely and it's a two ply. So it's yeah, just nice and simple. Yeah, it's a very beautiful, it's quite high twist, mm. so it's like it's quite smooth and yeah, it's a really lovely yarn. It's, like, yeah, like I said, it's still crispy because it's proper wool, yeah. but it's still really soft, like it's very smooth and yeah. strokeable. Yeah. Definitely. And I think it would be great for like weaving or crochet as well. I know a lot of the times um, if you crochet with lace weight, because crochet is a bit more dense, you can get really beautiful shawls, can't you? Yeah. If you use like a lace weight, so. Probably even be quite nice for socks. Yeah. If you wanted a sort of a little yeah. bit finer than your usual sort of I reckon if you were wanted to use tiny little needles and spend a long time making it, they'd be amazing socks actually, I reckon. High twist and proper wool, so Yeah. Quite strong. Yeah. So that's what we made. <laughs> so um, what we'll do is we'll give you a little close-up of the colours in a minute yeah. um, but first shall we just tell, remind folks what um, what breeds are in there because that obviously is important too. Yeah. So we have some Devon Close Wool. And it's from Devon, strangely. Funnily enough, that's yeah. one of our local, they are. They little really tiny are. like dots on their face. They're so cute. They look a bit like almost teddy bear. Like, you know, yeah, very sweet. They've got, as the name might imply, they've got really kind of dense wool. So they do look like teddy bears. Sort of like a Ryland, I think. Yes, They're more very famous, similar. Yeah. but have a similar quality to them. Um, and that is like a proper hill sheep. So they live out in the wilds of Exmoor. So they need to be well protected in the winter, so it's really nice warm fibre, the close wool, isn't it? Yep. And then there's also some of our favourite Exmoor blue face. Put it in everything. It's our local, we love it, it's great, it does everything we want it to. It's a really good all-rounder, it's got a real nice kind of handle. It's a bit bouncy and like a little bit crispy, but not really, but it just sort of helps kind of bulk things out. A tiny bit of luster. Yeah. The, from the blue face yeah and then it's also got some Romney which is a breed that's originally from Kent so the other side of the south of England um, but these Romney are grown here so they are from the west country and again much in the luster so they are big sheep yeah really big like they, they're very much uh, grown like from meat sheep, meat sheep, sheep as well so you they? get a really big fleece off one of those yeah I've, I've had back in my hand spinning days. I, I bought a Romney fleece. Have you? Yeah. Is it like what, like three, four kilos then? Like a real, bigger, bigger than that? It's like pretty big. Possibly. Okay. They're really big, but they're very beautiful. It's got some nice yeah. luster. So that's what we put the Romney in there to have a little bit of luster. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you've got some nice crispy proper hill sheep and a little bit of luster. And you get just a really nice woolly wool. And then the worsted yeah. spun just makes it nice and smooth. Yeah. yeah. It goes really well with that sort of slightly lustrous, slightly long wool. It's got a real nice durable handle to it. I probably wouldn't use it for like a cowl or something that I was going to wear in like the most sensitive areas. I don't know, other other sensitive areas. Usually it's just a cowl around your neck. Um, but, you know, if you're just making like a cardi or mittens, socks even, like you said, anything like that, I think is perfect. And it'll just wear and wear and wear and just get softer and lovelier. Um, so yeah, it's one of our favourites. I know it's been really, um, like it's been quite popular with all of you. The DK 
has been out for almost a year now. Almost a year. And it's now available wholesale in yarn shops. So oh gosh, yeah. Look out for it in your yarn shop or even tell them if you want to see it in your yarn <laughs> shop. We're happy to take more orders, but yes. Yeah. The lace will also be available wholesale, so some people will be getting that. Yeah. So I know that some people like it because it has all the silly names. <laughs> we like a silly name. If you're gonna if you're gonna make something and you're gonna make colours that are a little bit silly, then you can have names that are a bit silly to go with them. Yes, they are all named after cider apple varieties from the West Country, which is we didn't make up the silly names, we just looked them up. Yeah. So we didn't invent them, we just found them. We Someone can't be held responsible. No. Um, I think a lot of those apples, I read a really interesting book about um, like food varieties and different cultivars and things. And the apples were being made in like the 1700s and 1800s, which is around the same time that a lot of the different sheep breeds in the UK were also being kind of created. So they were doing lots of like breeding and looking for different traits. So a lot of those Devon cider names will be about as old as, uh, the, Devon as the Devon wool breeds. So I don't know if any of you have tried out using the Apple Door DK already. We'd love to know if you have. Yeah. yeah. We both love it, but really, really, really like the base version too. Yeah. We can't wait to hear what you um, you folks all think of the lace as well. Do let us know in the chat if you kind of are planning a certain project or um, have your eye on something. It's always nice for us to know what you're up to. Should we show folks the different colours? Yeah. Show you some close ups. That's the best bit, isn't it? Really, the colours. Yeah. So, here are all our neutral colours of the Apple Door. We've got quite a lot of them, don't we, Helena? Yep, quite a lot. We like a neutral palette. This is Fair Made, which is the undyed, nice, creamy, natural colour. It's a little bit of a cream, isn't it, rather than a pure white? Yes. But... This one still smells sheepy. Definitely. And then from that we go into our grades and the first one is called Pori Morning. Pori Morning, nice pun. And that one's just really pale kind of grey, it's quite elegant and frosty isn't it? It has an ever so slight sort of reddish brown tint to it. Just a slightly warmer than a straight up grey. Yeah, soften it down. And then next up is Dabinet. And that's our middle grey. Which again has ever so slight reddish tints, but not not ones you can really see. It just means it can work as like a neutral in a warm palette and a cold palette, doesn't it? We just added that yep. bit of rust. And then our dark grey is Payhembury. There we go, nice. Camera's focused on that. And that one is mostly the dark grey with just little whiskers of white in that, aren't there? Yeah, it's a really nice colour, that one. We don't have any uh, darker ones than this in this palette. This is the dark colour. Yeah, and that's because um, the actual top is a dark grey rather than a black. So for that reason, one can't ever make yarn that's darker than the colours you dye. So that's as dark as it gets. And then the more blended colours. This one, it's one of Sonia's favourites. This is Winter Stubbard. Which you made a cardigan in, didn't you? I did, I love that blooming cardigan. I wear it all the time. This is a magical colour. It can kind of look like a blue or a grey or a fawn, or even a little bit purpley, depending on what you put it next to. Yeah, it's a really lovely colour. And uh, the cardigan you made was the Sweet Alfred in the DK. Yeah. But yes, this is like, this is one of the ones where in the lace it really shows up the colour variations beautifully so you'll get you can see a lot of those bits of blue in it really well yeah you can and then we have going the other way we have a sort of more of a tan neutral this was getting a lot of love at Wonderwall as well wasn't it yeah. Wonderwall was nice it was the first time that we've sort of actually been able to show people the colours in person so I always like it when people go for the neutrals. This one is called Wimple Wonder. Yeah. And Wimple is a place. It so is. Some of these have very silly names and some of them are silly, but also because the places are silly. <laughs> <laughs> the 
They're silly because Devon's a bit silly, right? Yes. <laughs> and people who make cider are silly. This one is sheep's nose, which, you know, mm. little tiny boop nose. Yeah, and the sheep is cold. It's obviously a wintry sheep. It's got a little bit of blue in there. This is the frostiest neutral, I'd say. Yeah, but it's really lovely and... Uh, it knits up beautifully as well. I think this yeah. is John's favourite colour. Yeah. This one is the yeah the cool one to go at the bottom end of the blue spectrum, which we can go to next if you want to see the blues. Definitely. From left to right, we've got the white and then the mid grey, which is Davenette, Hoary Morning, which is the pale grey, then Pay Hembury, and then Wimple Wonder, and Sheep's Nose, and Winter Stubbard. This is, yeah, the blue green end of the spectrum. Nice. All of these. These are always good popular ones, aren't they? We love a teal here. I think yes. many of you watching at home quite like a teal as well. So this is our <laughs> tealiest one. This one is Tom Putt. If you just bring the camera back slightly, yeah, perfect. So Tom Putt is mostly turquoise and there's a little tiny hint of green and quite a bit of gray in there as well, I think. So it's very sort of, it's on the blue end of the teal, but it's mm. very like peacock colour. Yeah. It's a very beautiful colour. It is. And then next one down in the blues is... Yeovil Sour. And Yeovil is also a um, place, isn't it? Yeah. So Yeovil is quite a... a big place. There's a junction. <laughs> that's where the train stops. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's... Uh, Obviously a very sour apple variety, this one. Yeah, Yeovil Sour. Mm. Good for cider. Yep. Adds a bit of tartness. And this is another one of those really heathered ones, isn't it? Yeah, with a bit of white and a bit of sort of brownie colours in it. But mm. yeah, a good yeah. sort of mid-blue otherwise. And then the lightest one of the three. Billy this is... Pippin. Yeah. Ooh. And that one, the camera is kind of distorting the colour of that one a little bit is making it look more kind of greyed out I'd say than it is I uh, think it's having some troubles if I put it next to that does oh, that help yeah, it there we better. go that helps it. so that's the three of them together so you can see that you it's zoom out a bit because we've only got two yeah Whoop. perfect yeah so that's that's the billy next to the yeovil and the tom putt so you can see that it's slightly more on the greeny side and it's slightly lighter than the mm. other two it's a really nice wearable colour, that Billy Dan Pippin, isn't it? I think We've got a sample in that do. one that you'll see in, a, in the next segment. We do. And then from those Just blues, how it is. we then go into, I guess we could do the fun one in the middle. The crazy one. Which doesn't really fit in any of the colours because it's a it's oil the, slick rainbow. It's all the colours at once. So this is... Uh, so for those of oh, you that like our... There we go, the camera's got it. So for those of you that love Black Gold of the Sun in Yarnadelic, this is a very similar thing, that it's as many colours as you can put in it with the dark colour to make a nice grungy colour. So again, you can make this go with all of them and it can show up different depending on what you do with it. And it is a real kind of, yeah, I think it's got a little bit of every single shade of top in it, that. And again, it as the lace weight, It'll almost look hand dyed when you knit that up, won't it? Yeah, because be you'll really be able to beautiful. see all of these colory sections. This one is called Dufflin. Uh, as a top, this one is great fun. It was very popular when we first did the tops. This was like one of the most popular colours because it's got so many things in it. Yeah. Yeah. Then if we move into the greens, we have this one is Hangy Down. <laughs> it's a little bit rude, isn't it? Maybe. Potentially. <laughs> Depending on how your brain works. But this is our like darker green which is similar to the Devonia Furbelows in that it's got lots of different colours in it but it comes out as a nice dark green so it's like bits of the yellow and lighter green and a bit tiny bit of blue in there I think and that's the one that phased on her lovely sample in so yes. we've got some of that to show to show folks too yep and then the main green one spicy pippin spicy pippin this is yeah, just a nice bright mossy green. A lot of yellow in it, but just makes a really nice happily yeah, colour. It's just a happy colour that, isn't it? Yeah. A sort of nice mossy, yeah. mossy ochery green. And then it's and got then a that front. one 
that one has a friend. This one is Golden Knob, which definitely is a little bit rude. <laughs> There we go. And She's that's a, a really zingy old, zingy old colour. Yeah, sort of a bit brighter than a mustard, but not quite a straight up yellow. So it's just a really, yeah, very nice colour. Yeah. You'll be that's... seen from afar if you're wearing that. Everyone will know you're coming. It's a good road safety colour if you're on a bicycle. <laughs> so oh, there's they all your so colours nice in the blue greens. I love that. So this time, from left to right, then we have Golden Knob, which is a little bit rude, as Helena said. Then there's Hangy Down and Spicy Pippin, Billy Down Pippin, lots of Billies and Downs and Pippins, <laughs> very Devon apples. And then it's Yeovil Sour in the middle. And then the crazy colourful one is Dufflin. And despite having that many colours in it, it's actually quite a kind of calm and muted colour so I think it'd be a great one for a cardi or a jumper it would go with everything you yeah, own it somehow it? turns out as a neutral as well yes definitely and then the really nice bright teal is Tom Putt and then just on the end there is Sheep's Nose which is almost white but actually like a very pale turquoise and these ones are the warm colours beautiful as you can tell we like a pink <laughs> yeah, you can tell we made these colours. <laughs> Everything must be pink or purple. <laughs> so yeah, very similar to, where's the sheep's nose? I just got rid of sheep's nose that we had the blue super light one. This one is quench, which is the pink super light one. So you can see how yeah. they compare. And then take the sheep's nose away. This one, so again, a bit like the Dufflin and some of the others, it has a lot of colours in it. So it's got pink and yellow and blue in there with the white and again this one as you're seeing the sample coming up is you can really has that hand painted look That's in the lace beautiful sample yeah i really love this color it um it reminds me of like i don't know confetti and kids birthday parties but then it's a bit classier than that as yes. well it's like and a grown-up sprinkles <laughs> yeah. sprinkles on the icing yeah <laughs> it's that sort of that sort of color we love it it's definitely a firm fave amongst yep. all of us and then similar to that one this one is called slack mcgirdle so this one again has got a lot of colors in it but this is on the pink tone so you can see that it's got lots of blues and yellows in there so again will look really hand painted and again because it's got a lot of colors in it can go with sort of different things so it's sort of edges towards the purple but it's actually a pink yeah. but then it's a bit more of a neutral so yeah that's and this is another one that looks really nice knitted up as well um yeah it will look quite uh, sedate if you did it as an all over color it would be probably more similar to like the rose bay in harvest hues kind of and yeah that sort of yeah. burgundy chill it looks like it would be fun to knit with wouldn't yeah. it and then from nice date colour we go to the super bright Bing. pink. This one is pig snout. To match the sheep's nose. Yes, We've got a sheep's nose and a pig snout. Yep. <laughs> Noses. <laughs> but yeah, this one is uh, a hot pink, but it's got, again, flecky colours, a lot of bits of yellow, a few bits of blue. It's lovely. It's this. a really this lovely another... pink. It's another been, really popular we're sold one. out of this one in the dk at the moment it's that popular yeah people so love it emergency making some more <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a very beautiful color that one and uh d used this one in her shawl pattern she, didn't she did she did in her anemone kit in the dk so yeah, yeah she picked that color too and then the other pink which is the like the grown-up pink my mum's got a cardi in this and it's so nice it's really lovely. I steal it sometimes when I go this up one's and called visit her. called Sweet Coppin. And it's, again, it's sort of a, a darker pink, but it's got a lot of like bluey bits in it to sort of make it very cool. So it's more yeah. of a cool pink to the other ones. Yeah. But it it's a really lovely color. Is mm, one of the ones that's like more similar to actual apple blossom. And then you've got a bit of the green leaves sort of peeking through as well. There's something very like, natural about it as in like found in nature it's quite nature inspired i think and yeah. then a bit of brown kind of bark as well yeah and then oh, we also have a purple this one is ellis bitter so 
maybe doesn't taste so nice as an apple, but <laughs> makes great cider again. Yeah, quite a lot of cider apples. I think they have to be quite tart, don't they, cider yeah. apples? But this one uh, is purple, but it's actually made entirely from turquoise and pink, I think. Which is why you get that really beautiful heathering and like the little flecky colours in it. Yeah. So it's really fun. So it's like, it is just a beautiful purple, but it's got like brightness to it because the colours that went in were quite bright. Yeah. I love this one. I think this won't be one of my favourites. One yeah, it's day a beautiful I will make colour. myself something. make myself something in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. You can't knit with all the colours. Well, then, you could, but I yeah. haven't. <laughs> Last but not least is Fox Whelp, which is a, is a brown, but it's a brown that's got all the pinks and yellows in it. So it's yeah. in the warm colours and the neutrals again. Uh, this one's one of my favourites. I want to make a jumper in this. It's nice, isn't it? It's really wearable. It would go with all our, um, all of us here at work. We've all got kind of tan or dark brown dungarees as our main uniform. Yeah. And this would be good with with the dungaree colours. <laughs> yes, it's a very wearable one, but again, it, it's not just a straight up brown, so it's got lots of interesting bits to it. So Definitely. it's really pretty. And I'll show you that with the Wimple Wonder, which was the other brownie Perfect. neutral. So yeah. again, that's the, those are the warm neutrals. And from the left to the right with all of these, we have Wimple Wonders come back again. That's the nice fawn one. And then Fox Whelp is the darker brown. Then the purple is Ellis Bitter. And yeah, as Helena said, it's like a really dark pink with shots of kind of greeny turquoise in it. It's gorgeous up close. And then there's the sensible one, which is Sweet Coppin, which is just really nice, really wearable. And then there's the silly fun one, Pig Snout. And next to that is another silly fun one, Slack My Girdle. And then Quench on the end. I like the name of quench. It's like, um, you know, like a cold glass of water or something. It's very refreshing kind of a colour. Yeah. And that's all our Appledore shades. We got enough of them. I quite like to make some more one day, but <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not 20 yet. is plenty. <laughs> 20 is enough for now. Do you have a fave, Helena? Oh, I think quench and fox whelp and pig snout are probably the three that I love the most, those three. Yeah they're that's, nice together as well that's kind yeah. of like um it reminds me of ice cream it's like vanilla strawberry and chocolate yep it, it's a <laughs> neapolitan ice cream yes Definitely. well these are the ones that my sample we're going to show you are made in and this is the one i want to make a like straight up jumper in so that's th those are my three favorites well speaking of samples shall we show folks i guess we could we could they have tuned in <laughs> they have been patiently waiting so we may as well uh, this is the Achillea tea, which is, uh, means yarrow, which is a type of flower. So we're doing on the names the lace pattern on it. So the idea being that it's a summer t-shirt, so you're wearing it when you're outside in a field or something. Which in Devon you are, but maybe not everyone. Um, Less fields if you live in other parts of the world, yes. maybe. <laughs> All there can, is in Devon. You can pretend. But I you get it in the hedgerows and the parks and things around here. But yeah, I was just looking, I found this beautiful uh, lace pattern in one of the Japanese uh, stitch dictionaries and it just really looked like a nice little flower, so like the leaves, the little buds, so then I was like, oh, what kind of flower does this look like? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've made this in, obviously in the lace, and it's in the pig snout, bright pink, and then this one is the quench, which is the sort of uh, very very pale pinky colour but it's got like the blues and the yellows in it so we'll show you some close-ups in a minute but um, yeah it looks great as well I really like the kind of like it's sort of a bit of a relaxed fit but not like too slouchy yeah so um, it's made to be worn with some positive ease so somewhere between about three and eight but you could go much more positive ease if you wanted it's available in eight sizes this is the third size and it's got about five inches of ease on this one or it doesn't show that much over the dress that I'm wearing but um, yeah so it's sort of nice and loose and it's just you start at the bottom knit to here then you split and do front and back and this is just a sort of semi unfinished edge so you don't really need to do anything it just falls nicely over your shoulders and then up into ribbed neckline it's like you're saying about it's not in this way it's completely fine I think if I'd had it all the way up here that might be a bit too much yeah it's, it's not itchy at all it feels really nice and it doesn't feel like 
uh, wool, so it really feels t-shirt like. It's I'm actually lovely. kind of cold. I've taken my jumper off. <laughs> And what's it like on the back? Can you show us the back? Is it more of the same? Yeah, nice. I, exactly I, the same, but with a bit of a in the back. That's nice. It's always annoying when something's really fun on the front and then the back is not so fun. It's like, ugh. Oh. All over lace and yeah. front stripes. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to have done some fun kits in lots of different colours. And of course you can pick your own different colours. Yeah. Or one of my test knits has used three colours. Did so they? they? You can mix and match, see how you feel. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think you could make a nice version in like a navy and a cream and it'd be a bit nautical as well, yeah, wouldn't it? you could make yourself a settings version. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let's have a close up then. I made this. This is mine. <laughs> as we just discussed, I really like the quench colour. This one. You can see the like hand painted colours that you can see like for instance you can see here there's like a pink stripe in it and then there's like a blue bit and a yellow so you can like it's got a real sort of interest so it's really fun when knitting it because obviously it's changing but like oh I'm doing a little pink bit now or something yeah. it's really special isn't it that yeah. some of them it shows much more than the others um, and the reason it's like that is just because there's so many colors in there and we haven't blended them all that much so then that just means that, you know, there's whole sections where Kevin's only spinning nothing but blue fibres or nothing but pink fibres, so... Yeah, it has one or two less passes than, say, Devonia, which is really quite a blended one. Yeah. Tell us about your lace pattern, Hals. Oh, this is a, a lace pattern that uh, comes from one of those super fun Japanese stitch dictionaries. I was just looking for something that was flowers because for a nice summery t-shirt. So this is called the Achillea t-shirt because that's the like Latin name for yarrow, which is like a uh, sort of a cluster flower you find in meadows and hedgerow type areas in this country and probably several others. But that was sort of, so you can got like the leaves and the stalks and the flowers. So that's the beautiful sort of motif and then it makes this beautiful little curvy line because of the way that it has a wave to the to the lace pattern which means you've got a fun little stripe in the middle nice and then yeah it's just got obviously the same at the top to for the shoulders and a little ribbed neck and then at the bottom also just a little ribbed band so it's very straightforward and is it just knitted in one piece uh, yeah, you just start at the bottom and knit up. You can do it in the round or flat um, and then there's nothing like it's just a sort of a semi raw edge on the sleeve so it just sort of falls over your shoulder and you don't have to do any extra stuff once you've done your knitting. Nice. And yeah, it's really lovely to work with this yarn. It blocks beautifully so it just it makes it look really lovely. It's got it's a little tiny bit crisp so it like it really holds everything but it's still soft enough to wear and yeah lovely yeah and nice just, and lightweight and it doesn't feel like you're wearing wool like you know, wear it out as a t-shirt you can you feel like you are wearing a t-shirt so then the next thing is this beauty um, which is drusilla shawl and it's a really nice kind of kite shape to it so, yeah. so this is the corner to corner yeah kite shaped version and there is a version that is a triangle is and it's one of the patterns in our first annual so, so yeah some of you might recognize it but Faye has redone the lace version for the apple door lace and I love it it's such a nice size yeah it's just really easy to wear very wearable but also doubles as a baby blanket definitely and this <laughs> color in particular I think goes very well with my outfit yes <laughs> clearly I might be one. taking that yeah. <laughs> that one is in hangy down which is, is the dark green very beautiful um, then it's quite a nice easy pattern it's just this repeatable um, kind of the same all over and it makes this really beautiful delicate mesh and then I will also just show you this one might look familiar yes this is one of the original samples and that one's in Devonia four ply so bleeding heart with cinder glow as the trim yeah also yeah. nice so yeah and um it is just in 
this first annual. You'll see there's mine and Frankie's silly faces in it. <laughs> um, but the original was in a lace weight that's now discontinued. So they very kindly made a new one. Made a new one for us. And I just, oh, I just love it. And then I think Faye has also now released the pattern as a standalone and she's done a double knit version as well, which we don't have, but she's used our knit by numbers DK and she's used a beautiful like lavendery purple shade for that. So very nice. Go um, check out her, her socials or her Ravelry if you want to see that one. Um, but we can give you a little close up of this beautiful hangy down version now. So here we have Faye's Drusilla, and again you can see the way those colours. Um, you can see all the little speckly sort of exactly, yellow sections, exactly the little darker or lighter sections. The little yellow pops are really showing up, and then it's crochet, of course, and it's really nice kind of open crochet, and then there's just this beautiful little detail on the hem there, edging even. Yeah. And um, Faye's chosen to do this one as a one color version, but there are also options in the pattern to do a kind of contrast on the edging, which would be really nice. But this beautiful green just suits it a lot. This is a sample I might steal. <laughs> this is also, you can do it as a corner to corner square or a triangle. Yeah, you can. So lots of different options on how you want to make this one. It's a nice repetitive stitch. So it's just, yeah. It's good mindless crochet. Definitely. And quite good beginner crochet. I'm not a big crocheter, but I have actually made one of these. So yeah. it's just the same thing over and over. So if you're a new crocheter, it can be a good way to dip a toe or good kind of TV crocheting if you're, you know, that way inclined as well. We're going to uh, go and see Laura, one of our lovely mill folk, who's going to talk to you about our gill boxes and specifically about Ralph, one of our gill boxes, and show you some very special gill that she's making. Yeah, she is making something special today. Super secret. Hello, I'm Laura. I work downstairs in the mill, uh, and I'm going to show you today uh, one of our gill boxes. This is Ralph. Uh, we've got three gill boxes here in the mill. Um, this is my one. Um, is it? He's lovely. <laughs> um, so the gill box is the first machine that the fibre goes through when it arrives at the mill. It arrives here and it's in these things called bumps. They're lovely like balls of fibre. Um, and we need to process it so that we can make it into the yarn. We need to make sure it's at the right weight per metre. Um, and we need to blend the colours that we want to make and we need to make sure all the fibres are aligned and nothing's bent back on itself and it really smooths out. And the gill boxes do all those jobs, they're really great. So they're quite important then. Yes, we couldn't do it without the gill boxes. <laughs> You'd have to get out a little comb, yes. wouldn't you? And just do it all by <laughs> hand. It would be a very difficult job. Um, so at the moment I'm processing one of our specials for our Mill Open Weekend. Ooh. It's very exciting, sneak peek. Um, this is in our Devonia range um, and it's a mix of red, white, blue and turquoise and it makes a beautiful rich pinky purpley colour. Yeah, this is top secret. We haven't <laughs> mentioned these at all yet so it's very exciting yeah, for everyone watching. A sneak peek. Uh, so at the back we've got the tops going in, so these have already been blended, uh, we've put the different pre-dyed tops together uh, on one gill box and then they've come to me uh, like this and I put them together and run them through into this one which blends the colours even more and gets us a really smooth even colour. In fact it'll get gilled again after this one okay. um, to make it really nice and ready for the spinner. So they've already been gilled once yep. and this is the second gill yep. so you can see they're quite kind of stripy looking yeah. down there aren't it's they? It's quite sort of like toothpaste or ice cream when it comes out like that you yeah. can really see the different colours. 
And then when you come here, this is one you've made earlier. This one I made like earlier. on Blue Peter. Yeah. You can see um the you can still see the stripes, but they're blending together together a lot more, getting lots of stripes of the, the blue and the turquoise Beautiful. and the red and white. Uh, and it starts to really soften the colour and even it out. And it'll end up like a nice purple, I think yes. you said. Yeah, it's really lovely. So this is all set up. I've already worked out the um, grams per metre, so we get it right. Um, we're always checking the weight along the processing so that the yarn is the right weight, and that means that you get the right meterage for your 100 grams gain. Um, so inside the gill box, um, we've got loads of, they're called fallers, they're like combs really, lots of sharp combs. Ooh, let me get in close. Yeah, I'm going to open it right up, you I'm ready? Like, yeah, let me Ugh. just get my phone out of here. Ooh, wowee, that looks sharp. Yeah. So in here, we've got all of these bars with lots and lots and lots of sharp pins on them. And these go through the fibre, you can see the fibre down there, really, really fast. Uh, so they comb it, so that smooths out the fibres, makes sure they're really nice and parallel. Any little sort of uh, turned over ends, which you often get with the wool fibres, straighten those out. Uh, and obviously as all of this is going through, it helps to blend the colours together, as I said. Uh, and we can control by controlling the speed of the rollers and the fallers. Sorry, these rollers and these fallers. Um, that helps us to control the weight per meter. So okay. we change the gears to control what it comes out like at this end. So the thinner it comes out of the machine, yeah. the thinner the yarn will be at the end? Yes. Or yeah. the thinner the top will be? Uh, so. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Yeah, both. Yeah. And then, because um, sometimes I know we do our tops at lots of different weights for mm -hmm. anyone who spins. Sometimes things come and they'll be quite thick and floofy and yeah. sometimes they come and they're more of a sliver. So. Uh, yeah, when we're making it for tops, uh, for hand spinners, we're not too worried about the exact mm. gram per meter because the hand spinner is going to control yeah, that themselves. Of course. Um, but when we're putting it through our spinning machines, we have to really know exactly what it is so that we get a consistent um, single ply when it comes through the spinning machine. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're using two colours together, they might be different thicknesses and yeah. it might not be so good. Yeah, so we want to make sure it's as consistent as possible uh, and that you always get the same product at the end. Grand. It looks quite scary. It's um, These are quite sharp. I've yeah. cut my fingers on Ooh. them. Health and safety. <laughs> yes. We do only run the machine covered, so yes, don't be too I cannot, concerned. I cannot run it like this. It won't go. But I do have to get in, and when I get in and clean them, that's the danger. Uh, <laughs> you need some, like, gardening gloves or something. Yeah, have special gloves. For pruning roses. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically how it works, but it's incredibly useful and, yeah, a real workhorse of the mill. Grand. Thanks so, for showing us. Could you tell us about it. this counter as well, <laughs> please? I'm just curious. This counter is uh, the old one, so we don't actually use this oh. one, but it counts the sort of the meterage as it goes through okay. the um, through the gill box. So we we do use a counter, but we've got a more modern, slightly more modern electric one, mm -hmm. um, and that allows us say if we want to make. Well, at the moment, I'm making 12 kilos of this tops, but I need it in six sections. So the counter allows me to make a two kilo section by weighing it, checking it, setting the counter, uh, and then I can make lots of twos, and then I can put it through again. Ah. Do the same process again, because this okay. needs one more gill to be turned into tops. Great. Well, let me get out the way, and Do then you maybe you could give us a little there? demo. Yeah. yeah, that sounds wonderful, please. So it will be a bit noisy now for anyone watching at home, just bear that in mind.
it's a wool. Oh, well, thank you so much for showing us, Laura. That's all right. It's another beautiful shawl. This one is by Frankie, Francesca Hughes. It is by Frankie Frankie. And this is the CC, which is Crown and Cat. Which is such a cute name. Anything with cats is always has, good by us. It has very cute little cat paw motifs. That's what all the little holes are, which we'll show you in a minute in a close-up. But uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful one. Uh, she's done this in Billy Down Pippin. And yeah, you can see it's a really nice size that you can use it like as a little shawl or yeah, you can wrap or it around your neck as a little like, you know, more warm. like a scarf. Yeah, so nice and cozy. But yeah, that's... Uh, Is it a stole? Is that the shape of this, would you say? Or a wrap? It's a stole or a either wrap? Either of those, yes. But yeah, it's a beautiful lightweight thing. It's got a little bit of it's sort really of a frill. Nice. I like the way it frilliness. swooshes. Yes, it's swooshy and a bit frilly and yeah, very pretty. So here's a close-up of CC Crown and Cat and you can really see those adorable um, kind of cat's paws motifs. There's another one here, look! Um, and the way that Frankie has knitted this is there is like a middle panel which is a rectangle so you kind of make a scarf and then the scarf just gets edged with this same motif here. It's just an edging. So you kind of do a middle panel and then you go out and add a nice border on the end as well. So it's quite nice to sort of do a middle bit but not for too long and then you get to put the border on as well. Get some very nice big rows so you can just kind of go round and round and round. So now we've had a look at my jumper and the two shawls. Uh, we're going to have a little look at another jumper that's done by Astrid, who's one of our other favourite designers who does loads of things for us. And she's done a jumper where she's held the Aperture Lace double, which is really lovely. And we're just going to let you tell, let, let her tell you all about that. Hello, my name is Astrid, and I am Knit for Passion. Today I want to show you my sweater Gisela. Gisela is a classic raglan sweater knitted top down. For the whole sweater I have used two strands. I have changed the colors for each section only one of the two threads. In total I have used four colors. Now let's talk about construction. Gisela is knitted in the wonderful Appledore lace white yarn. After the double twisted collar, there are a few short rows to get the neckline shaping. Here you can see the raglan increases. After the lace part, body and sleeve are separated. There are a different rounds of sleeves decreasing to get this correct line. At the end of the sleeve there is a twisted rib. The body is knitted up to your desired length and close with a double twisted rib again same like the sleeves. So I think that's pretty much us done for today, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Oh, the one thing, you haven't even, you've been wearing this amazing, Helena's got her new finished product project on, and you haven't told people about it. Uh, yeah, so it's people beautiful. will probably recognize it. It's the one off the cover of the most recent pom pom, although I think the, probably the new pom pom might even be out by the time you see this. <laughs> I think it's the one before. The spring pom pom. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, effervescent by Amy Sher. It just has the very silly little frill on it. It's so good. That's it's really fun. <laughs> and yeah, um, I made this. It's actually made in Devonia, but not Devonia that you can buy there. Because somebody else dyed this one. So we actually sell all of our base yarns for other people to dye on, which 
we always find great fun. And uh, we do have something special about that coming up for yeah, we do. open weekend. We are going to be partnering with some of those lovely people who die on die on our yarn. And is it Beth from Telling Yarns? Yes. Is it yours? Yeah, this is Telling Yarns in the colour um, for the love of Ginny. Mm. It's very nice. And we might have some of that at the open weekend for anyone who's coming in person. Farewell. <laughs> Bye.